Welcome to the video help with physics problems for Physics 1A. In this video we'll be doing set 1 part 3 which is some of the questions under the heading motion in 2 and 3 dimensions. For 1121 this will be questions 7 to 10. For 1131 we'll be doing questions 8 to 12. Problem 7 for 1121 or 8 for 1131. In this question, we're told that at time t0, the velocity of an object is given by 125i plus 25j meters per second. At 3 seconds later, its velocity is equal to 100i minus 75j. Three seconds later. And we're asked what is the average acceleration of the object over this time period? Well the average acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the time interval. So this is the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the final time minus the initial time. And so that is 100i minus 75j minus 125i minus 25j. And the time interval goes from 0 seconds to 3 seconds, so that's over 3. So we can add the i components because they're in the same direction. So this is minus 25i, and we can add the j component, so this is minus 100j, and this is all over 3. And so doing this on the calculator, we get minus 8.3i, minus 33j, meters per second per second. And that's the solution to problem 7 slash 8. Okay, problem 8 for 1121 or 9 for 1131. We've got a particle that moves so that its position is given by R of t is equal to i plus 4t squared j plus tk. And we're asked to write an expression for its velocity and acceleration as a function of time. Velocity is equal to dr dt. So we just need to find the derivative of this with time. When we take the derivative of i, we get 0 because it's constant. When we take the derivative of 4t squared, we get 8tj. And when we take the derivative of tk, we get plus k. So that is our expression for the velocity. For the acceleration, we use dv dt. And so we need to take the derivative of this function here. The derivative of 8t in the j direction is just 8 in the j direction. The derivative of k is 0. And so this is the answer to part a. Part B says, what is the shape of this particle's trajectory? Well, the 4t squared here tells us that that's going to be a parabola. So the answer to this is a parabola. We're now up to problem 9 for 1121 or 10 for 1131. This is a projectile motion one. We have a stone which is projected upwards with an initial velocity of 42.0 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees to the horizontal. It goes up to some maximum height h. At the maximum height, the velocity is equal to zero, and then it falls back down to the earth, but it hits a cliff here, which has height h. 
a little h and the stone lands at a so this is point a here and the time of the flight is equal to 5.50 seconds okay and we're asked to find the height of the cliff so we need to find this value in part a the speed of the stone just before impact and also the maximum height h here above the ground okay so to answer this question it's a good idea to probably start by actually working out this height because if we get the time to the maximum height then we know the time for it to get from the maximum height to this position A and from that we should be able to work out the height of the cliff here which is what we need for part A. Okay so to do this it's important to split this problem into horizontal and vertical components. So let's look at this initial velocity in a bit more detail. It's going at 42.0 meters per second. And we can split this into a vertical and a horizontal component. This is 60 degrees here. So the horizontal component is 42.0 cos 60. And the vertical component is 42.0 sine 60. Now, for projectile motion, the horizontal component remains constant. So this is v in the x direction, and that'll stay constant for the whole time. Whereas vy changes because we've got the gravitational force acting on it and causing it to accelerate. So to work out the time for it to reach the maximum height, we can use the equation Vy is equal to V naught Y minus GT, where this is the acceleration and this is the time. Okay, so Vy, the final velocity is zero. The initial velocity is upwards, so it's 42 times sine 60, which is 36.37 minus 9.8 times t, which rearranging tells us that t is equal to 36.37 divided by 9.8, which gives us 3.71 seconds. So we now know that it takes 3.71 seconds to reach this maximum height, which tells us that the time to get from the maximum height down to the cliff is equal to 5.5 minus 3.71 so the time of flight for this part is equal to 1.79 seconds. Okay, so let's work out this maximum height reached. We can use the equation y is equal to y naught. It starts from the ground, so y naught zero. The vert v naught y t plus a half a t squared where a will be minus g okay so let's work out this we've got h is equal to v naught y which is 36.37 times the time of flight which is 3.71 minus a half times 9.8 because this is going upwards, this acceleration is directed downwards. They've got opposite signs, so one is a positive term and one is negative, times 3.71 squared. We need to enter that into the calculator. And we end up getting 67.5 meters. Now what we need to do is work out the height of this cliff. So what we can do is consider the time of flight from this point H to point A. So we can use this equation again. And the distance fallen is 
is equal to the initial velocity. Up here it's got velocity zero, so that's zero. So this is a half times 9.8 times t squared. We said this was 1.79 seconds to 4. Now I've left off the negative sign because we've recognized that it's a distance fallen, so it's a downwards distance. So 0 0.5 times 9.8 times 1.79 squared gives us 15.7 meters. So we've gone from 67.5 meters to 15.7 meters. H is equal to the difference of those two, which gives us 51.8 or 52 meters to two significant figures. For that's the answer to part A. We've also got the answer to part C, the height of the cliff at 67.5, so 68 metres. Part B asks us what's the speed of the projectile at A. To work that out, we need to consider the horizontal and the vertical component separately. We've got the horizontal component already here, because the horizontal component does not change as we're neglecting air resistance. So what we now need to do is work out the final velocity in the y direction. So to do that, we can use v final is equal to v initial plus at. We're just considering the time from height h to a. So the initial velocity is 0 minus 9.8 times the time, which is 1.79 which tells us that it's 17.5, minus 17.5 meters per second. Now we're asked for the speed, not the velocity. So what we need to do is work out the total magnitude. So we've got 17.5 downwards, and then 42 cos 60, which is 21 across and we need to get this magnitude here so we use Pythagoras's theorem 17.5 squared plus 21 squared gives us 27.3 meters per second so to two significant figures that's 27 meters per second and that is the speed if we were asked for the velocity we'd have to give this magnitude and also work out the angle in here or if we wanted, we could work out this angle. It doesn't matter which one, as long as we describe in the answer which angle we've worked out. Okay, this is problem 11 for 1131 only. In this problem, we have a bore that rolls horizontally off the top of a stairway with a speed of 1.5 meters per second. So we have a stairway like this and we have a bore with Vx is equal to 1.5 meters per second. Now remember Vx isn't going to change, it's the horizontal component and as long as we neglect air resistance it should remain constant. The steps are 20 centimeters high, so this is 0 0.2 meters and they're 25 centimetres wide. And we're asked which step will the bore land on first. Okay, so here's the top step. Let's call this step one. We'll call this step two. And we'll call this step three. We need to work out which step the bore's going to land on. So to do that, if we work out the time it takes to first of all fall through this first 20 centimetres, we can then use that time to work out what the horizontal position is. If the horizontal position is out beyond the edge of the first step, that will mean that the, the ball passed somewhere like this and didn't hit the first step. So let's first of all work out if it hits the first step. So time to fall 20 centimetres. Well, initially, v not y is equal to 0. It has no vertical velocity initially. 
So the time it takes to fall 20 centimeters is given by zero. We're using the equation y it equals v not y t plus a half a y t squared. Okay, so y the distance it's fallen is 20 centimeters. This is zero, and this is one half times 9.8 times t squared. Now we've left the negative off the 9.8 because this is falling 20 centimeters. It ends up 20 centimeters below where it started. Acceleration is also acting downwards. So as the acceleration and the displacement are in the same direction, the negative signs will cancel out. Solving this gives us t is equal to 0 0.202 seconds. Okay, so now we know how long it takes to fall this first step. Let's work out how far along it is. The distance traveled in the x direction is just equal to, because it's a constant velocity, 1.5, the velocity times the time, which is 0 0.303. So it's traveled around about 30 centimeters out so it passes the past this corner of the step. Now what we need to do is repeat this same thing for the second step to see if it lands on the second step. The time taken for it to fall to the second step, we can take the time from the top to here to work out if it passes here. So this is 0 0.4. It's fallen 40 centimeters by the time it gets to the second step starts with no vertical velocity so this is a half a y t squared which is a half times 9.8 times t squared which tells us that the time that it approaches the second step will be given by 0 0.2857 seconds okay now the horizontal distance it will have traveled by that time is equal to 1.5 times 0 0.2857 and that is 0 0.4285 seconds but sorry 0 0.4285 meters but this second step is also 0 0.25 meters along so if it's to pass this point here in that time, it must have traveled 0 0.5 meters, but it hasn't traveled 0 0.5 meters. It's traveled less than that, which tells us that it's going to land somewhere on this second step. We could actually work out the exact distance using this. It will land 42.8 centimeters from where it started horizontally. And so the answer to this is the second step. Problem... 10 for 1121 or 12 for 1131. In this problem we have a cathode ray tube. A beam of electrons is projected in horizontally. So they've got negative charge and they've got a velocity 1.0 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. The region between the plates is 2.0 times 10 to the minus 2 meters long and we're told that the electric field causes the, ex the electrons to accelerate downwards between the plate at 1.0 times 10 to the 15 meters per second per second. Part A asks what's the vertical displacement of the beam in passing through the plates. Well, to answer this part, what we're going to have to do is use the horizontal part to work out how long it takes the electrons to pass between the plates, and then we can use the acceleration in the vertical direction to get the displacement in the vertical direction. So find time first. Time is equal to distance over velocity. There's no forces acting horizontally here, so it's got a constant horizontal velocity. 
So this is 2 times 10 to the minus 2 meters over 1 times 10 to the 7 meters per second, which gives us 2 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds. And now we have to work out the displacement. We can use y is equal to y naught plus v naught yt plus a half a y t squared. Initially, it's got no vertical displacement. Initially, it's got no velocity in the vertical direction. And so we only have to worry about this term. This is a half. The acceleration between the plates is given here. 1.0 times 10 to the 15 and t squared, t is given here. So substituting all this into the calculator. Gives us 2 time, point zero times 10 to the minus 3 meters, which is 2.0 millimeters. That was part A. Part B says the velocity of the beam, direction and magnitude as it emerges from the plates. What we're going to need to do here is come add the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity as vectors. The horizontal velocity is 1.0 times 10 to the 7. Now we need to calculate the vertical velocity. To calculate the vertical velocity we can use the formula Vy is equal to Vy0 plus At. A y t. V y naught initially it has no velocity in the vertical direction, so this is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the 15 times the time, which is 2 times 10 to the minus 9, which gives us 2 times 10 to the 6 meters per second, and that's downwards, so we've got 2.0 times 10 to the 6. This here is our resultant that we need to find. We can use Pythagoras to find this. And this gives us 1.0 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. We also need to find this angle here. So we can use tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, so 2 times 10 to the 6 over 1 times 10 to the 7, which is 11.3 degrees. So this is 11 degrees below the horizontal. Yeah, and that's the end of this problem.